What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video and Happy New Year's. Ever since the Gerfalcon Hauberk and the Omni Oculus exotic chess pieces were introduced into Destiny, the majority of hunters have chosen these as their go-to exotics when running Night Stalker builds, leaving the Orpheus rigs to become a forgotten about exotic. But today, I'm going to show you how this new Orpheus rigs build will forever change the way that you play Night Stalker Hunter. This top tier build will provide you with extraordinary survivability and astonishingly fast uptime of all of your abilities, allowing you to take complete control of any encounter at any level of content. Orpheus Riggs comes with the Uncanny Arrow Intrinsic Trait, which will provide you with one of two benefits when using Tether. When running Mobius Quiver, you gain an additional Tether Volley, going from three to four total Tether Shots. But when you run Deadfall Tether, you gain Ability Energy off of each Tethered enemy. You will gain 10% Grenade, Melee, and Class Ability Energy off of each enemy that gets Tethered. But even better than that, you'll gain a substantial amount of Super Energy off of each Tethered enemy, allowing you to have your next Tether ready in less than a minute in most situations, and as little as 15 to 20 seconds when there's a heavy population of enemies. The base cooldown of Deadfall Tether without the use of Orpheus Rigs is over 7 minutes. With High Intellect, you're looking at around 6 minutes, so having a Tether at the ready in a minute or less is going to give us a tremendous advantage when it comes to overall team support and crowd control. On paper, the amount of super energy gained from each Tether is supposed to be capped at 50% but you'll find that between the Orpheus rigs and other modifications that we've made to this build, you'll be gaining much more than 50% energy off of these tethered enemies. What I find most appealing about this Orpheus rigs build is that its success is not contingent on a seasonal artifact, so anyone can use this build, even free-to-play players. Before we check out the weapons, the armor, and mods that we're pairing up with the Orpheus rigs, let's take a look at our Void 3.0 subclass. And let's start with our aspects. We're using Stylish Executioner, so whenever we defeat a weakened, suppressed, or volatile enemy, which is going to be 99.9% .9 of the enemies that we're engaged with, we'll gain invisibility and true sight. True sight highlights targets, even if they're behind walls, and with invisibility, we'll have a few seconds to regain composure, reload weapons, and realign field position. And since we're not utilizing invisibility by means of dodge or finisher, this will be a great way to provide a consistent source of invisibility. And after defeating a debuffed enemy, our next melee attack, while invisible, will cause targets to become weakened, even if it's an uncharged melee, allowing us to keep this chain of invisibility going on indefinitely. We're also using Trapper's Ambush, which grants us the Quick Fall Ground Slam ability, which is perfect to use against tethered enemies. This does consume a smoke bomb charge in the process, but it creates a smoke cloud on impact that damages and weakens nearby enemies, and it will make you and nearby allies invisible. The combination of these two aspects will serve as a wonderful complement to our use of the Orpheus rigs. And with our choice in fragments, we'll really be able to improve the uptime of all of our abilities, allowing us to control and dominate every engagement. We're using Echo of Reprisal, which is going to directly impact the uptime of our tether. When at least three enemies are within eight meters, we'll gain additional super energy off of each enemy defeated, which is going to stack on top of the bonus energy that Orpheus rigs will provide. Echo of Reprisal is one of the most important fragments to this build, and it will be a leading contributor to maximizing our tether output. We're also using Echo of Starvation, which is going to boost our ability to stay alive. This will provide us with Devour whenever we collect orbs or void breaches. While Devour is active, we'll have health recovery triggered when defeating enemies, and we'll have extra grenade energy getting generated as well. You can expect to make a lot of orbs and a lot of breaches with this build, which means the Devour will be getting reactivated often. And with that said, we are using Echo of Harvest, so whenever we defeat weakened enemies, we will create orbs and void breaches. Orbs can be generated once every 10 seconds with Echo of Harvest, with void breaches getting created every 5 seconds. 
Each orb is going to give us 2.5% super energy, and each void breach will give us 12.5% class ability energy, allowing us to recharge our tether much faster and have our dodge ability much more often. Our last fragment is Echo of Expulsion. I like using this fragment because it creates an additional explosion when enemies are defeated by any of our abilities, causing extra damage to any enemy that's within 7 meters, helping us clear out groups of enemies much more easily. This includes enemies caught within our tether, and it even includes enemies affected by certain exotic and legendary weapon effects like destabilizing rounds. If you find the explosions to not be as beneficial with your build and you want more survivability, then I would recommend utilizing Echo of Vigilance. So that way you'll gain an overshield when defeating enemies when your shields are already depleted. With aspects and fragments addressed, let's talk about our choice in grenades. Vortex is a pretty common and popular choice, but honestly, I prefer suppression grenades. They stun overload champions and temporarily disengage all affected enemies, and when defeating those suppressed enemies, Stylish Executioner will be activated. When it comes to our choice in dodge, we're going with Gambler's Dodge. This way, whenever we perform our dodge near enemies, we'll have our melee energy instantly restored, allowing us to weaken enemies with either a throwable smoke bomb or a quick fall slam. When it comes to the armor and our character stats, the focus when in PvE should be resilience to reduce incoming damage, intellect to reduce the base cooldown of our super energy, and from there it's going to be mobility and strength to reduce the cooldown time of our dodge and smoke bomb energy. And when it comes to the armor mods that will synergize with this Orpheus rig setup, we're looking at mods that are going to improve the uptime of our abilities and our super. This is why we're using Harmonic Siphon, Heavy Handed, Firepower, and Reaper mods. These will create orbs off of void weapon kills, enemies defeated by quickfall, grenades, and when defeating enemies after dodging. The Reaper, Firepower, and Heavy Handed mod can only generate one orb each every 10 seconds. Each orb is going to generate an extra 2.5% super energy. And keep in mind that we have Echo of Harvest also creating orbs for us. And every time we collect an orb, we're getting Devour activated. On our helmet, we're using the Hands-On mod. Since we'll be performing a lot of quick fall slams, this will help generate additional super energy off of each enemy defeated. But we could just as easily use Ashes to Assets since we'll have great uptime of both abilities, so it's really going to be dealer's choice as far as which ability you use more often. On our chest piece, we're going with resistance mods, but when it comes to the Orpheus rigs, we're using recuperation so that we have a secondary source of getting health back when collecting an orb. We're also using insulation so that when collecting orbs, we'll get additional class ability energy. And by using Absolution, when we collect orbs, a small amount of energy will be provided to each ability. And by using Utility Kickstart on our class item, whenever we perform dodges with armor charges active, those armor charges will be consumed to provide us with as much as 33% extra dodge energy, allowing us to perform those quick fall slams much more often. And through our choices in armor mods, we should be able to effectively maximize the uptime of all of our abilities, including our super, and keep us loaded with devour as long as we're engaged in combat. Even though this build isn't reliant on any of the seasonal artifact mods, there are a few that will provide some unique benefits this season, most notably solo operative and from whence you came, which provide bonus damage when solo and when against taken and scorn enemies. We also have Wished into Being, which is going to create additional orbs when defeating enemies with any of our abilities, when our super energy is close to being full, which is going to stack on top of the orbs that Echo of Harvest and all of our armor mods are going to generate. There are some great rocket launcher themed mods this season, but we're not really including many rocket launchers into this loadout and we'll get deeper into our weapon choices here in a few moments. But there are some standout strained weapons that I really like running with this build that will benefit from some select seasonal mods. Weapons like the Until It's Return shotgun, which absolutely crushes enemies when it has Surrounded active. And there's also the new Vengeful Whisper Bow, 
which has some really great combinations of its own. Both of these will benefit with the use of Unraveling Orbs and Dragon's Bite. Collecting Orbs will grant Strained Weapons with Unraveling Rounds, which will pierce barrier shields. Unraveled enemies create tiny Strained Threats that deal bonus damage over time, and with Dragon's Bite also equipped, whenever we break an opponent's shield with these Strained Weapons, those enemies have a chance of becoming suspended, becoming even easier targets for us to abuse. A great complement to all of our Void abilities. And now let's talk about our choices in weapons. First, let's talk exotic weapons. There's quite a few that will synergize extremely well with this build. Graviton Lance, Wave Splitter, Collective Obligation, Ruinous Effigy, all of these are great exotic choices because of their inclusion of Void verbiages. But the true S-tier exotics that we want with this build are the Luminarch, the Leviathan's Breath, the Tractor Cannon, and the new rocket sidearm that weakens enemies and triggers devour all on its own, the Buried Bloodline. Laminarch is the perfect ranged weapon. Intrinsically, it stuns overloads and it weakens enemies, which is going to trigger Stylish Executioner. The Leviathan's Breath is one of the strongest, hardest hitting heavy weapons in Destiny, and it stuns unstoppable champions while dealing out a massive amount of damage that's going to synergize very well with the Orpheus Rigs. The Tractor Cannon is, in my opinion, the best up-close solo exotic weapon that a player can use, even when running a Night Stalker build. It weakens enemies, causing a 30% increase in any damage dealt. It gives you a nice speed boost, and it too will trigger Stylish Executioner. And then there's the Buried Bloodline, a new exotic from the Warlord's Ruined Dungeon. This weapon shoots out double rockets that will trigger Devour after final blows. And while Devour is active, this weapon will weaken enemies on impact, which again is going to trigger Stylish Executioner. And since sidearms get the ability to pierce barrier shields this season, it will do great up against barrier champions. Even though it still runs on special ammo, this is a tremendously powerful exotic sidearm that's going to pair up extremely well with how we have the rest of this build set up. Outside of exotic weapons, the main legendary weapons that we want to run with this build should have traits like Destabilizing Rounds or Repulsor Brace. Destabilizing Rounds will cause enemies to become volatile, and Repulsor Brace will give us a nice overshield to help stay alive in the harshest of environments. And for that reason, I really like using weapons like the Word of Crota, the Age Old Bond, the Aragos Auto Rifle, the Unforgiven SMG, and the Valshae Scout Rifle. As I mentioned before, Strained Weapons will have a significant benefit with this build, which means that the new Strand Slice Weapon trait will be a great addition. After activating a class ability, these weapons will cause enemies to become severed, which is going to reduce the damage output of those enemies by 40%. Enemies are going to be absolutely screwed when you hit the scene with this Orpheus Riggs build, because everything is going to be weakened or tethered unable to fight back, giving you a significant advantage in every engagement. So if you've been leaving those Orpheus rigs in the vault just to collect dust while you use the Gerfalcons or Omnioculus instead, well it's time that you gave the Orpheus rigs another try, because this build is absolutely perfect. A top tier build with never ending tether to topple any activity during Season of the Wish, whether you're in a team or going at it solo. And with that said, that brings us to an end of today's Night Stalker build video. I hope you've enjoyed and found it helpful. If so, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. If you've already been running the Orpheus rigs this season, be sure to let us know your thoughts down in the comments below, and let me know what you've been enjoying the most out of Season of the Wish. And if you need to make a quick copy of today's build, you can easily do so by visiting the Destiny Item Manager link that's in the description below. If you're a new Light Guardian just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link that's also in the description below, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy holidays and some happy hunting.